Hello, and welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, my name is Robin. I'm gonna be going over what I read in March and April. I am halfway through my reading goal. My reading goal every year is 50 books, and I'm currently at, sitting at 25 books, which is exciting because we're five, five months in, so a little bit ahead of schedule. But without further ado, let's dive into what I read in March. The first thing I finished in March was The Exorcist, this was a buddy read between me and my friend. They absolutely adore The Exorcist and read it a couple of times and have been suggesting it forever. This is a fantastic book and I can understand why it sort of held as a classic. If you don't know anything about The Exorcist, this follows uh, Regan, who is a small child who starts acting quite weirdly, but her famous like actress mother, uh, Chris, um, starts to notice all this like weird behavior. Things take a turn for the worse with Regan and she sort of has to find different doctors and find out what is happening to her. And I think the the, the scary thing about this book is I have n I've never seen the Exorcist movie and I've obviously never read the book. I was expecting people straight off the bat to be like, oh my God, she has a demon in her, we need to get her out. But I think the horror comes from this book that like everyone is doing the right thing. If you think about what would happen in like modern day situation or just any in any situation ever, I just assume like when you're reading books that people are gonna go straight for like, this is definitely what it is. Like she's definitely haunted. She's definitely possessed by something. I was very, very surprised. I think like the real horror from this book is that you just see this child dying to this possession and everyone is just trying to get a logical answer to what is happening to this kid and no one thinks it's because there's a demon in her and she goes for different tests and stuff like that and there's a lot of I think a lot of the horror comes from nothing happening and nothing helping this child and knowing so like full well what it is and just sort of screaming at it at your own book being like please please I know what it is please like I think that was like I I, I was pleasantly surprised by this book because I genuinely Genuinely thought that this was going to be like a, oh we're going to just struggle with the demon and like that's going to be the true struggle and I would also say that Regan's plotline is a B plotline as well because we do have a priest that comes in and we follow mostly his storyline and his relationship with Faith and how he's lost his relationship with Faith and it's a really fantastic story and I think that he truly is the main character of this book and I think his story is the main overarching arc of the book which again I was surprised at and I really think that his like relationship with the church and God and being a priest and um, his family and like the full sort of circle moment towards the end of the book I think is genuinely some of the best writing <laughs> and like storytelling I have seen from a book. This has genuinely, this was a five star book. This was fantastic. And it really kicked off March for me because yeah, I, I my friend knew right because this is genuinely one of the best books I have ever read. It really is a fantastic horror book. And um, if you haven't read it yet, I would definitely suggest you do so. The next book I read was Merciless Waters. This does have adult content in it and it follows a ship that have um, all, all an all women ship on it and we follow the stories of Jack and Lily and a man washes aboard the ship and Lily just becomes obsessed with him and it's sort of given away that this has happened before and Lily decides that she's going to give everything to this like mediocre man and uh, Jack is very upset and she doesn't want to lose her love again. This has happened before and all she needs to do is to sort of like impress Lily is basically just kill this man and get rid of him. But a lot of things start happening on the ship and uh, these women start to regain memories of lives that they previously had and it's sort of the ship I would say is sort of like an afterlife ship or like um, a middle earth sort of ship sort of thing and these women start to regain their memories of what life was like before they passed on and before they were here and so it is a, it's an interesting concept for a book again it is like this is an afternoon reading like two hours reading this was a fine read I didn't really get anything from it and it's you know it it wasn't awful but it wasn't great it was sort of you know 2.5 you know i read it <laughs> the next book i read was the hundred year war on palestine and this was a book that i read because i just thought it was important to stay educated i think educating myself just so i could educate people around me a lot better was um important 
and so I read this book and finished it and it is a extra it's a, it's a very heavy book um content wise of just it is very in depth and in detail for everything that has happened throughout the history of Palestine from 1917 to uh, 2017 so you really get a scope of how long this has been going on for and how just awful and how complicit um, different countries have been um, like the UK and the US and how they have continually funded um, a, a genocide for over a hundred years at this point. Um, this is not something that is in a recent event and it's been going on a lot longer than most people seem to think. And I, yeah, I, this was a very interesting book. I definitely think that this is a book that you should go out yourself and read especially if you want to keep updated and just understand what is happening more. I will leave a link to some GoFundMes below and some other um, resources that you could use like emailing your local MP and stuff like that. I have donated to a few uh, causes um, already and I continuously uh, email my MP as well and I just think it's important that you should be doing the work to help Palestinian people. And yeah, so if you want to stay more educated and keep yourself educated, I definitely think that this is a fantastic book to read. Um, it is just very heavy content wise and uh, of course with the content itself. But uh, take your time with it. I think I, I, it, it took me about a month to get through this book. And so yeah, the next book I read in March was Bright Young Women. Bright Young Women surprised me because I, I guess I've heard a lot of people talk about this book but I actually just didn't know what the book was and when it turned out to be non-fiction I, I, I was surprised with reading it. It's a genuinely incredible recounting of a, a bunch of like a murder spree that happened in 1978 and how the US justice system and how women in particular like trying to um, talk to the police and get a story together and just how difficult it is to get justice for the people that were in, in, like killed in these and how the police just never seemed to believe anything that the victims had to say and it yeah it's, it's a very very heavy uh, book to read. It's potentially very triggering to read as well because there are a lot of things that do happen in that book. I'm really glad that this book went through the line of like going through the difficulties of getting through the justice system and the police and what little they did and instead of just focusing on when you like read non-fiction stories or if you are you know someone that enjoys or watches or listens to true crime um it focuses so heavily on the crime itself and i think that this book did a really good job of um detailing the crime and then i think the journey to like everything after the fact was again very interesting but it just it just felt heart-wrenching to know that what these people were going through the last book i read in march was cemetery boys and this uh, i've been waiting to read this for a while and this was a, it was a good book I, I did enjoy this book and it, this is a teen novel and it follows a latina young teen yadriel um as he maneuvers his way through his family and his customs and traditions as a trans gay man and we follow yadriel as he basically challenges his fa family's customs about how um he wants to become a brujo but his family won't let him because uh, he doesn't they, because he wasn't born uh, a man and so he takes it upon himself to do the ritual for him to become a brujo himself and this includes summoning a ghost and then letting the ghost go onto the other world when he summons this ghost the ghost refuses to move on to the afterlife and we find out that this ghost name is julian and Julian uh, doesn't want to move on to the afterlife because he wants to see if his friends are okay and says like once we check in on my friends uh, then I'll move on to the afterlife. So Yadriel is stuck with Julian and so he decides that he's going to find out what happened to Julian 
and yeah it's um it's a very fun uh, um it's a very very fun story and uh, this is a book that ended in a happy ending which is so nice like I wasn't expecting that as well but the characters are fantastic this is a really fantastic lovely uh YA book if you're interested in YA books um yeah I really enjoyed this one this was it was so good but I gave it three stars it was like I really I enjoyed it but it wasn't like out of this world for me so it yeah it was a it was a really nice fun book though. I'm gonna keep this one quick and brief because I've done a whole review on it but the next book I read was Butter and um I just I just didn't enjoy this book. This book follows journalist Rika who is trying to bust out of the journaling world and thinks that getting an interview with a, a known serial killer Manako Kaji is going to be the next step in her journaling career because Manako Kaji has never had a an interview with anybody and with her retrial coming up people are gripped and uh, want to know more about this serial killer but no one actually knows if she killed these people she has apparently killed three men but um, and the only thing connecting her to them is that she was near them by the time that they died but they all died in wildly different ways and it is an interesting case based on a true story. We get to see Rika's connection with breaking out of the patriarchy and unlearning things about the system that was put before her and there are a, a lot of characters in this book and like I said I just didn't enjoy it I said this in my review as well um, I just thought it was very very long-winded and I think there were a couple of plot points for me that just didn't feel like they belonged in this book the next book I read was Peach Pit this is a book that has 16 essays in from different unsavoury women and different perspectives and it, I really enjoyed this I did really enjoy this I gave this three and a half stars uh, this was the main reason I wanted to read this piece because Alison Rumford has an essay in this I am a massive Alison Rumford fan if you have seen my channel at all before and I did really enjoy her essay I really enjoyed the series of stories and yeah it was they were fun a lot of them were really fun and again this was only a very short book as well so uh, if you're interested definitely check it out and the last book I read in April is another heavy one I read in the dream house and this was a five star book for me this book is another I believe biography about the author Carmen and her relationship her abusive relationship with um, a former ex and how having abusive relationships in, in the lesbian community and what that means and how it played out I think this was a incredible book it was incredibly raw it was incredible it was just it was absolutely incredible and it made me tear up a little bit in some places and I think this it was genuine this book is like beyond belief it genuinely is there's not really much more I could say on this book and um, the fact that it is very triggering there are definitely a lot of triggering topics in this. The author of this book is a fantastic writer. This book is beyond incredible there's not really much I can say because I, I can't really put words to it. A fantastic book another five star book from me. So that is what I read in March and April. There are a lot of heavy books that I didn't realise I was reading. All the books I've read I don't think I've really read anything but though so far this year that I've been like oh I hate this. So at least I somewhat enjoyed the books that I mentioned but yeah I, it was a it's been a good two months for reading and I'm very excited because I've got, we've, we have a couple more books coming out that I'm super excited about and you know the new Julia Armfield book comes out next month and I'm so <laughs> so excited because I have a ticket to go and see her as well in Manchester. Very much looking forward to future releases that I have pre-ordered and maybe some reviews coming along the way. Again I'm going to link below some different resources for Palestinian aid um, for you to donate to or you to email your MP or just to stay educated because I think it's very important to do so and yeah thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed this video like comment subscribe all that good YouTube stuff and I shall see you next time